It's amazing! Want to know where you can find that giant puppy? You can see that and much more in the north of Spain in the city of Bilbao. <laughs> Hola, this is Alex. Welcome to my vlog where I talk about awesome things to see and do in Madrid and in Spain and about living abroad in general. If you haven't yet, do subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when my videos go live. Since I arrived in Spain a few years ago, many people, both Spanish and non-Spanish, have been telling me to go to the Basque Country in the north. They say it's a very beautiful place, they say that the food is great over there, so I decided to finally go and see what the fuss was all about. I decided to go to Bilbao, which is the largest city in the Basque Country. It's also very close to a place that is significant for fans of Game of Thrones, which I am, so if you're a GOT fan, do wait for that part. But before I talk about Bilbao the city, I want to ask you something. Are you Filipino? If so, did you want to know if I found some chorizo de Bilbao in Bilbao? And if you're not Filipino, you might be wondering, what in the world is chorizo de Bilbao? Chorizo de Bilbao is a very popular sausage in the Philippines and is a common ingredient in many Filipino recipes. Now, according to my very, very super scientific Google research, chorizo de Bilbao was actually invented in the Philippines by a Filipino. And supposedly, the, the owner of this company decided to pay tribute to his roots in the Basque Country, particularly in Bilbao, and so he called this chorizo, Chorizo de Bilbao. Eventually, this company was sold to an American company, and so a lot of the Chorizo de Bilbao circulating around the world is made in the USA. Long story short, Chorizo de Bilbao was invented in the Philippines, is now being manufactured primarily by an American company, and is unknown and unavailable in Bilbao. Now that that's out of the way, let's go to Bilbao the city. There are no fast trains to Bilbao, so I had to endure a very, very long train ride, which is also the most dizzying train ride I've ever had here in Spain. Usually, the train rides I've been on in this country have been smooth, but this time it was not the case. When I was in the train cafeteria, the train kept moving side to side, and the stuff on the tabletops were slipping off and falling onto the ground. That's how bad the movement was. It was really very dizzying. But finally, I got there in one piece without throwing up. So I'm finally in Bilbao after sitting in the train for five hours. When I got off the train, I saw that the artwork in the station was beautiful, particularly the stained glass window, which was stunning. The first feature I noticed in the city was the river. So this is one of the first things you should do when you arrive. This is walk by the water. Bilbao used to be a very industrial city with steel as a major industry. There were a lot of steel factories and decades ago, the city was not particularly pretty. However, the city has been revitalized and is now quite beautiful to look at. You get beautiful views of the old and new quarters of the city when you walk along the river. You can also sit on the bench by the riverside so that you can take in the view. One thing you shouldn't miss is the Guggenheim Museum. This museum houses modern and contemporary art, and the museum itself is known for its architecture. It was inaugurated in 1997 and is one of the largest museums in Spain. There are works of art on display outside the museum. The first one I saw was a giant sculpture of a spider made of bronze, marble, and steel. This sculpture is called Maman and is among the world's largest. It was created by the artist Louise Bourgeois and was unveiled in 1999. The spider has a sack containing 26 marble eggs. The sculpture is supposed to be a representation of the strength of the artist's mother and is accessible to all. There's another outdoor sculpture called Tall Tree and the Eye by Anish Kapoor, which is made with stainless steel. There's a list of the artwork that you can find outside the museum, and one of them was called Fog Sculpture. And I was looking for it and I couldn't find it, and it was very enigmatic at first. I thought it didn't exist. We were looking for the fog sculpture and here comes the fog. I 
I didn't realize that it was going to be literally some fog. The best outdoor work of art for me was a sculpture called The Puppy by the artist Jeff Koons. That puppy sculpture is the thing I've been looking forward to the most here in my visit in Bilbao. See, and I'm so happy to see it's so cute, it's so big, it's amazing. The puppy is 13 meters or 43 feet tall and it's a West Highland white terrier puppy made of different kinds of flowers, including marigolds, begonias, and petunias. I spent an hour sitting in the cafe outside the museum, sipping a drink while looking at this dog. I didn't go inside the Guggenheim Museum anymore because I was so happy with the sight of the puppy. However, I did go to another museum. I checked out the Bilbao Fine Arts Museum, which had an exhibition of Basque painter Ignacio Zuluaga. It was the first major exhibit devoted to the entire career of this painter, who is considered one of the most important Spanish artists in the early 20th century art scene. The exhibit featured 95 paintings that were reunited for the first time after almost a century. After you've had your fair share of art, it's now time to enjoy one of the other main attractions of the Basque Country, their famous pinchos. Pinchos are small finger foods served at bars and restaurants all over the Basque Country. They are very similar to tapas, although they're usually not very big. The name comes from the Spanish verb pinchar, meaning to stab or puncture. Pinchos used to be served on small slices of bread with toothpicks piercing them through the middle, thus the name. However, Basque cuisine has evolved and now there are many more pinchos aside from the ones that are stuck to a piece of bread with a toothpick. You'll usually find a whole counter lined with different pinchos when you go into a bar. These are usually called cold pinchos, but some of the bars also have a pinchos menu, which are warm pinchos cooked on the spot. I know it's hard, but you should try to resist sampling every pincho in one bar because there are other bars nearby that might have other amazing pinchos. Locals will usually eat one or two pinchos in one bar with a glass of chacoli, which is their local wine, or a small glass of beer before moving on to another bar. This is what is considered a pinchos crawl. After you've had a fair amount of these amazing pinchas, it's time to do some sightseeing. A short drive away from Bilbao, maybe 20 to 25 minutes, you'll find a very scenic place. And this is particularly significant for those fans of Game of Thrones, as I mentioned earlier. It's the island of San Juan de Gaztelugache, which might be familiar to fans of Game of Thrones, as this was the island fortress of Dragonstone. So that's Dragonstone behind me, the home of Daenerys Targaryen. The island is connected to the mainland by a man-made stone bridge. The bridge becomes a narrow path with 241 steps that will lead you to the top. When you get there, you'll see the church, which has a bell in front. According to legend, you should ring the bell three times and make a wish. The church is dedicated to John the Baptist and rumor has it that he even set foot on the island. In the hit HBO series Game of Thrones, instead of the church, the Targaryen castle sits on top of the hill. But this, as it turns out, was only computer-generated imagery. Which city in Spain would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments section below. Hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, ciao chicos!